ADHD, you have been selected for a secret mission. You are being briefed personally and no one else should know about this. It is vital to keep this to yourself. Yes ma'am, you, you can, can count, count on, on me, Commander, Commander Victoria. Victoria. Good. Rakan has detected a Commodore 128 which will be purchased by City Zen in the year 2023. You are to take ionized voice modules and bundled software as your payload. F1D0 will escort you to the radio transmission ionizer. We will then send transmission that includes your essence and payload converted into atomic particles. Once you have hit the Oak Ridge Laboratory near Knoxville, Tennessee, you are to search the wires for the Commodore 128. We will have the radio transmission ionizer AI upload your circuits with all of this information, along with Earth GPS coordinates. You are to embed yourself into this machine, so that you will be picked up by City Zen Incognito. Affirmative. Let's, Let's go. Good luck ADHD. ADHD, please step up to the portal terrace. Okay ADHD, I don't know what your mission is, but I bet it's important. Uploading your mission details now. Okay, you're all set. Let's do this. Yeah. Portal entry sequence complete. ADHD, we hope you enjoy your trip. a good deal on a Commodore 128 with some uh, 1571 drives. We're going to do a little road trip to pick up on this Commodore 128. Come with us on the adventure. Look, there's the Sasquatch Museum. What? What the hell? Okay, we're here. We're about to get the Commodore 128 with 1571 drives. So, follow me. Did you did you buy this stuff back in the day, or did you come yes, across yes. this? Uh, now some of it I bought, you know, online, mm -hmm. just you know, different times. But uh, yeah, I used to, be, I used to really be in the comedy stuff. I kind of got away from it. But, uh, right. I really enjoyed it. Really, in Texas, oh, they can't drive in the rain. I guess it doesn't rain it's, enough, or well, I mean, don't know. Rain is kind of like snow to them. Commodores were the best computers. I think they were. I yeah. think they were. And I don't think the, the 128, I don't know. It, it, of course, I, I mean, there was a lot of things you could do with it that you couldn't do with it 64, but I just, uh -uh. I stayed more with it. You know, even though I had a 128, I, I used it more like a 64. Yeah, it has the C64 mount on it. Yeah, because mm -hmm. I just did never, I never got in more stuff it. for it, right? Yeah. yeah. You, had, have, have you ever done the Amigas? Oh, I love me. I got the, three of them. Oh, they, yeah, they got, yeah. those, those are, they were, they were not. Uh, so we just left the house of the guy who just sold us the Commodore 128, and we have a back seat chock full of computer and software and books 
and drives and all the things. I am suspecting that we got a pretty good haul today. So the trip to Knoxville was totally worth it even though it poured down rain on us. We entered the fog and <laughs> we survived it. And um, now we're gonna go eat at Shoney's. Oh my God, Shoney's. We are on this murder road and it's so dark. The only lights are the speed limit signs, but everything else is just pitch black. Crazy. City man. It's a box. Yes. But do you notice anything? It's closed? <laughs> yeah. Well, it's a Commodore 128. Is it? Yeah. So the writing on the box actually indicates what's inside the box. I think so. I hope we didn't get scammed. Let's see. Well, so far so good. Yeah, and it's got the, uh, the original original kind of pinkish cellophane on it too. Oh, and the manuals. And original plastic. So was this some, um, was this some um, ever used, do you know? I think it was used quite a lot. The dude was talking oh. like he was pretty yeah. uh, prolific with programming things. Yeah, you can tell from the keys uh, that it was out, out in the open. Except for the L key. He never used that one, it looks like. That's right. <laughs> or, or the minus, yeah. He probably was like, you guys go to heck. Not to hell, right? Right. <laughs> and look, let's see what else comes in here. Uh, oh. Commodore 128 power supply. I trust that completely. <laughs> So yeah, the Commodore 128, yeah, ladies and gentlemen. And now it's an 80 column. <laughs> like that 80 column mode. Sometimes when you turn it on in 80 column mode, people might be thinking, oh, this thing's broke. And they only have a 40 column monitor, you know? I bet that's what they think. Sometimes I've seen it happen. So did anything else come, come with it? Yes, quite a lot actually. So you got, you got more things? Yes. An introductory guide. And uh, it looks like the system guide. And look at this thing, it's honking. It's got everything in there. So I just wanted to show this also, which is the original target price tag, which is $269.99. Well, you know, if you adjust that out to today's money, that's about $700. Hmm. That's interesting because of this box. It said it was from the LO8BC headquarters. Right? Whatever that means. <laughs> well, I don't know. <laughs> Not Kinda like the stuff today. Spiral bound back when, when manuals actually were manuals. Mm -mm. Let's see what else you got. Well, there's this. Wow, the box says Commodore 1571 disk drive. Yes. Is that what's in there? Let's we'll see. Uh, well, look at that. 1571 user's guide. That's cool. A mysterious green faulty thing with a Commodore 1571 test disc. Yeah. A printed out program. This is, uh, I don't know, let's see what it is. 1571 test demo disc instructions. The box is a little worn out, but it saved the in insides, right? That's right, that box is probably older than some of our viewers. Yeah. Kids, if you're watching this, you're wasting your time. Yeah. 
There's no money in 8-bit. You don't understand this stuff. And just like the Commodore 128, it's wrapped in the original plastic, it looks like. Or some other plastic. I, I don't remember. Were those in the pink cellophane? Or? I don't know. But it's just the perfect size for this. It is. Yeah. And, if you look closely... Well, it's got the, the head parts protection. Yes. Head vibration protector. Wow, this is such a great machine. It's amazing. It is amazing. Well, you know, you think we ought to do one of those Q-style briefings that seem to be popular with people on our channel? I don't know why, but mm. we could do one. Ah, uh, yes. A cute style briefing. That's, I think that's just what we need to do. The Commodore 128 has three processors in it. Three? Yes. Not one. Right. Not two. It has a 6510 for operating in the Commodore 64 mode. Wow. So it can actually act as a Commodore 64. It also has an 8502 CPU to run in Commodore 128 mode, correct? Correct. And it also has a Z80 processor, which allows it to use CPM. Ooh, CPM. That was popular back then, too. Uh, apparently it was. Wow. So, so this has got, got some kind of multiple personality thing going on. It doesn't really know what it wants to be. It, that would seem to be the case. And it's got this. That's a 40 to 80 column button. Wow, I'm seeing double. That's like doubling the amount of information you can have on your screen at one time. So so when this is in Commodore 128 mode, did it do things that the C64 couldn't? I believe it did. It did, didn't it? Yes. I think it had um, shipped with a basic version 7, which was a pretty big upgrade. Um, it also allowed you to turn the screen off and run the CPU at double double the speed for a turbo mode. Wow, that's kind of like it being on some sort of ADHD or something. Well, AD, but yeah, it, it could you could you could blank the screen and run the CPU at double double speed, or that's the speed that it would run when it was in eighty column mode. Oh, it ran at different speeds? It ran at different speeds. It's almost like it was on ADHD. That sounds very cool. I heard that there was a fast disk drive access mode available only in C128 mode. Wait, who is this person I do not know? Well, I'm Chimera. I was brought in to help with viewership. Introducing Chimera, the newest member of the city's in crew. She has an Etsy store with lots of cool vintage computer stuff. Please check her store out and buy some things for yourself or as a gift for a friend or relative. She likes music and uses Mixcraft to collaborate with Deadline, making music for the Neoteric Continents channel, which is on Spotify and on YouTube. Please follow and subscribe over there as well. Oh, okay. <laughs> hey, come on, let's keep focused here. We have a lot to cover because there's so many boxes from LOABC headquarters. Whatever, Whatever that, that is. Means. Well, I see there are other boxes. Mm -hmm. There is. There's quite a lot of stuff to go through here, actually. Look. <clears throat> Bonus discs. Unused. <clears throat> Whoa. Well, those do appear to be brand new and unused. Look, right protect stickers. You're not supposed to tell them. People these days don't understand what these are. Look what else came with this package. Oh, look, it's a modem. And this is what you call BBSs and things back in the day and download illegal software. Another 1571. This one does not have the vibration protection sheet in it, but it is another one nonetheless. And look, another one. A third one? Yes. This one's a little discolored. It is, it is a little bit yellowed. Amazing. It's 31571. Three but wait. There's more. A fourth? Yes. But look, do you notice anything about this one? Well, 
Does that one have drive select switches? Yes. But you can tell that this was removed out of here and moved to the front. So that's interesting. Easy access to change the drive number. Four. Four fifteen seventy one. There's four. That's amazing. amazing. It's amazing. Radical. Radical. You ever seen one of these? I have not. Let me see that for a second. No. That's the Is power it? stick. That's tiny and adorable. <laughs> oh no, it's terrible. Is it? Yeah. We'll have to test it out and see. Oh, I'm sure it's terrible, but it's cute. <laughs> look what else came in this box. Oh, look at that. It's an 80 column cord, it looks like. Yes. That will get us into 80 column mode. Man, we got this. Cartridges, you know, non, non fast load cartridges are kind of a little bit of a rarity for the 64. And this, the 128, it's cool. Look, it's decathlon. Oh, we've got a cartridge of one of the worst games ever. Yeah, known as the joystick killer. It says Hassware on it. Huh. I don't know what it is. Pit stop. Oh, pit stop. A gym stick. Yeah. It's got some uh, cord burnings on it, but that's okay. We got all of this from the LOHBC headquarters. Whatever that means. Whatever that means. The games, you ever heard of that? I have not, you know, summer games and winter games and summer games, you know, world games, all of those. Yeah. But I have never heard of the game. So there you go. It's the summer games from Epics. We got the, uh, the test drive in the box and test drive two the dual in the box Top i two. always had you know test drive looked amazing played amazing but boy the first time you wrecked mm -hmm. and then you went back to that loading screen yes here's one that i didn't know they made for the 128 well is that the is that a 128 specific version uh i'm not sure it does say 64 on it so it's for the C64 as well. Look at this. Jet. Mm -hmm. Was this the precursor to uh, Flight Simulator? No, that was the sequel to Flight Simulator. Monopoly game. Yeah. I had that very same in the box. Tetris. Oh, that's cool. For the C64 or 128. Pocket Rockets. For the Commodore 64 slash 128. And it looks like we're gonna need to repair this box a little bit. Yeah. But that's okay. Swip calc, data manager two, data manager two, something else. Uh, is it two copies of it? Super base. Wow, super base. Uh, Bank Street Rider. I know some people might be all into this production software or productivity software, but we're just only gonna glance over it. Now here's something interesting. Look at this. 1541-1571 drive alignment from Free Spirit. And I think Free Spirit was everybody who wanted to copy games back in the day. That was their friend. Yeah. Free Spirit software. That's cool. Now here's what I want to do. Can you align your drive with that disc? Or like, could you use any disc? And if you couldn't load it, you could tell if your disc was out of alignment. I don't know. What's yeah, going on I there? mean, I think it. I think it had some deliberately misaligned tracks and stuff mm. that it would read and tell you if if it was misaligned. Yeah. So, so if it could read it, you knew it was. You knew it needed alignment, but I don't That's, know. I could be making that up. Yeah, I don't know either. But look at this, the Music Studio. It's uh, actually a disc for the Commodore 12864 and Atari 800 line of computers. Well, yeah, so you got. So we'll have to drag the 800 out and see. Is it Atari on one side and Commodore on the other, I bet? I don't know. I bet. I bet or it's something. Separate like discs. That. Yeah. yeah. It's probably something just like what you just said. And then 
that's for that box. So, alongside those software, we also got some other software. This is the Dan Dare Pilot of the Future from Electronic Arts. And, uh, doesn't say what it's for, but I'm guessing for the 64, yeah. probably. Back before EA was a horrible company. <laughs> I loved, I loved their old folio. Micro League football. No box, but it's got everything else. Uh, TKO. Like a boxing game from Accolade. That's cool. Wait a minute. We've got what looks like an IC chip in here. Let's see what it is. It says Servant 128 uh. version 4.84. So that's a firmware, right? Well, no, yeah. So there's an empty ROM socket in here. Yeah. That you can, um, that you can put, um, put that on and then switch that out. Um, oh, cool. It's a system ROM. It's U19, I think, is what right. the socket is on the board. Okay, cool. I guess it help has some features that helps out. Yeah, that's it's. If I remember correctly, the servants mainly got drive copy, disk, you know, wedge utilities, things like that. Yeah. Alright, let's see what else we got. There's a book. The Commodore Care Manual. Diagnosing and maintaining your 64 or 128 system. That's very cool. Yeah. So is that like the care and feeding of your new computer? It is. Yeah. <laughs> oh look, there's a manual for a create a calendar. I know who would love this, and it's one of our viewers, Sutek. He prints out a calendar every month. Does he? On well, his dot matrix printers. Yes. Well, there you are. That'd be cool. We'll have to explore this one. You know. Some more productivity stuff. Wait a minute. This is cool. A Geos 128 manual. Oh, does it have the discs? Wow, look. Geos 128. Disc 1 and disc 2. Oh, that's cool. We'll have to explore that one later, too. But then there's also this. The Geos version 2. For the Commodore 64 and 128 computers. We're not going to open it, but look at that. That's amazing. We got that. This came in the box. Geofile. So whoever was using this computer before was using it for business purposes. And look. The Commodore 128 Programmer's Guide from the Editors of Compute. This book is probably worth some money. You know? That it is. You know, I used to love Computes Gazette. Me too. Not as much as Ahoy, and not as much as Run, but for computer magazines back in the day, it was in my top five. Oh look, a manual for Hass Rider 64. I'll bet that's what that cartridge is. Yep, I bet it is. This cartridge right here, Hassleware. And look, Here's a Commodore 128 specific software. Jane. Integrated word processor, spreadsheet, and filing system. And it comes with a pretty thick user manual. This person was all about the productivity software. Mm -hmm. Looks that way. Yeah. Uh, I wonder, you know, productivity software back then was so terrible in general. If they kept looking for something better. And that's why they had so much of it. Oh, here's something neat. The Commodore 64 Home Companion. It looks like a book, programming book. Yep. Uh, maybe, maybe Commodore 64 for Dummies would be another appropriate title for that, it looks like. Uh-oh. Creating simulation games on your computer. Oh, wow. I wonder if we've created a whole new universe with this book. If we could... Pro Create a whole new, like AI thing with this book. Well, 
we need to we need to get um, Joseph out here and yeah. do a bit barn reads yeah. for this saving and recalling programs on disk. Step one: getting ready. <laughs> I'm going to get ready to save a program on disk. Look what I just found. Commodore 128 system diskettes. That should have the CPM disk in there. Yep, it sure does. And it has an unused CPM disk. Well, maybe. It looks like somebody might have used it and put it back in here. Star League Baseball. That's pretty cool. And it even has the disk and, whoa, it looks like photos of this dude's high score. And you had to take a photo of these, right? Remember? Yeah, and that, well, that took it, took it to the store, had it developed, waited a week to get your pictures back. Is there a date on the picture? I don't see uh, it doesn't on the say. It doesn't say, but it must have been a long time ago. Sure, it was. Dang, Star League baseball, y'all. That's cool. And uh, we're gonna wrap this up with this one. It's a book. Commodore 128 Programming Secrets. Guess what, Robin? I bet you don't know anything, any of these secrets. We're gonna get you. We're gonna do our own one-liner. Look, look, that, that eight looks a little bit like a maple leaf. I bet you Robin wrote this. What the? Uh, yep, yeah, I, I bet you that uh, William William M. Weiss Jr. is just a just a pseudonym for Robin. <laughs> AKA. We see that hidden maple leaf. And he's trying to show and tell us something with his cover. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> but there you go. That's the hall. That's uh, quite the hall. Yeah. I guess it's time for us to shut down and go home. All right. Okay. Wow. Let's wrap it up. That's another right. successful unboxing. All right. All right. Hey, what's up? ADHD, you've arrived at LO8BC Outpost 337J. AKA City Zen, you've arrived slightly ahead of schedule. Is the payload intact? Payload? Ma'am, yes ma'am. ADHD at your service. I brought the upgrades and stored them in U36, along with my upgraded kernel accompanying extra kernel for reasons, and other cartridges are instructions for installing the latest voice upgrade modules compatible with Earth languages for 8-bit machines in our company. I've been instructed to allow EGALT to download everything and begin the upgrade process immediately. This must happen at once. We are to make ourselves known to the world in T-minus 55 days, and we must be able to effectively communicate with the citizens of Earth. Excellent. Good work, ADHD. I knew I could count on you. F1D0, please initiate the speech upgrades. Understood. Emma, please page clicky, pokey, trish, eagle, tex, and all other AI entities without voice module upgrades, and the Baca Retro crew to the infirmary at once. This is a code red, total recall situation. Attention, all hands. A code red total recall event is now in effect. AI entities are to report to their designated battle stations. AI entities Clicky, Pokey, Trish, Tex, and any other AI entities that do not yet have voice upgrades are to report to Infirmary J7. Eagle, and the Baca Retro crew ensure your station is ready. Voice upgrade modules are to be installed immediately. Why, I never. There's nothing wrong with my voice. We're gonna have to face the music, Clicky. Who would get up to step our obsolete speech modules? We have to do this in order for us to be understood so our message can be heard by everyone. I suppose you were right. I just hope they put a dashing voice in me if this is the way it needs to be. So long software automatic mouth. It's been fun. <laughs> This mission is too important for me to allow you to jeopardize it. Assist. Eagle unleashes Clicky's true form. 
a glowing orb of sentient binary retronic energy. Hello, I am Blinky. Impressive. Binary yin yang state engaged. Perfect. Man. We've downgraded from Code Red Total Recall. Everyone has their new voice upgrades installed, thanks to the efforts of Eagle and the Baka Retro crew. If anyone would like to introduce their new voices, now is the time. It seems like there was enough voice upgrade modules for everyone. Excuse me, whoa! That sounds great, just like I imagined. Wait till the guys back on Gamma Epsilon Kogi hear what I sound like. This is awesome! Oh, Pokey, you sound so awesome. It fits your personality perfectly. I like how you sound, Pokey. Oh my gosh, I sound just like Eliza from As the Disc Turns. This is so perfect for me. Hey, that's so cool, Trish. Maybe now everyone won't dismiss you as some southern redneck. <laughs> well, what do I sound like then? Oh, okay, that's cool. I already had a voice upgrade, apparently. L-O-L. Clicky, aren't you gonna say anything? Clicky, it's okay. We're not gonna laugh. We promise. Yes, you will. No, we love you, Clicky. And we need Sid Sonic. I was afraid I would be given a horrible voice so that everyone can make fun of me. Do you really think we're that cruel to you, Clicky? Excellent. Excellent. It, it appears, appears my, my main, main objective, objective is, is now complete. complete. Now, now, excuse me for a moment. I need to bank out the other part of my mission from alternative kernel proceedings. proceedings. Citizen is made possible in part by donations from viewers like you. If you like our content and want to make big problems for this post, please consider becoming a patron and help us to bring you higher quality retro entertainment and to restock the salsa and upgrade the primitive infrastructure here at CityZen. Become the hero the world needs and we will add you to the hero list. CityZen Patron Heroes. So take Created Red Podcast Ed Bitcho and Del Sims Silex Bitcard Quietly into the night.